I've done a number of exit interviews uh, with uh, with ranking officials who have left office. Uh -huh. uh, the last one was uh, Butch Otter. Right. And uh, every exit interview has three obligatory questions. And the first one is, okay. what's next? You're 60 years old. Uh, that is a uh, that is a young man by current day standards. Thank you for that, Mark. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> As a 63 year old <laughs> to a 60 year old, uh, you're not ready to jump in a golf cart. Uh, so so what? Uh, tell us right now, for the entire viewing area to see, what is your next chapter? Well, I don't fully know, Mark. Sorry to disappoint you, but uh, I've got some discussions going. I'm really. Uh, excited about those opportunities, but they're just not quite uh, ready to uh, chat about. Public uh, service? Well, I don't think so. I, I'm, it'll likely be in the private sector. Uh, I've been 20, if you count legislative service, that's 21 years in yeah. in an elected or appointed office, and that's, uh, uh, you know, that's quite a bit of time yeah. and a great I've enjoyed every minute of it, uh, but I, uh, my discussions right now are in the private sector, and that's uh, likely where I'll go. Uh, You're a lawyer by trade? Yeah, I don't think it's the, the direct practice of law, uh, maybe some related things, but uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm excited about those discussions, and uh, when they, uh, you know, when they reach the final stages, I'm sure we'll... Uh, Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about that more, but they're just not quite ready. Yeah, are you gonna just kind of uh, decompress? You yeah, I take do. Take a couple months off. I do uh, plan to take a couple months off, uh, which a lot of which will uh, involve cleaning my garage and uh, all the things that you you let uh, you know that you let go while you were doing this job and other stuff. So. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit of travel, maybe, I hope, if we can sneak it in. Uh, I have a 14-year-old daughter, so mm -hmm. I have to figure out the school parts of Go it. Go back to the uh, Basque Country, maybe, for a little bit? Well, there, that would be great. I don't know if that's in the cards, but there uh, there may be an opportunity. Uh, there's discussions of another Basque soccer friendly, and mm. they may need somebody to go over and chat about that, so uh, <laughs> uh, that might be fun. I. Uh, yeah, I haven't been several years, so it would be great to go. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to make that in the near term, but uh, soon I hope. The other obligatory question is, uh, you, you think about what 16 years in this office, uh, what's transpired in 16 years, where this city was 16 years ago, and uh, the, the lack of trust uh, at City Hall with the residents of Boise and, and uh, the former mayor and his team and and uh d just the the hell that was going on at city hall 16 years ago you had a hole in the middle of downtown boise you you had some sprawl happening um i think you had one library in town exactly right um you know 16 years later you've got the foothills preservation policy that you enacted you've got high density You've got the hole filled in downtown Boise. You've got a transportation hub. When you look back over 16 years, and you're 10,000 feet above, what do you see? Well, uh, you know, let's start from the early days because I think that's really important. Those uh, were tough times in all these ways. But just that basic trust in City Hall, that was uh, in need of repair. And... Uh, uh, I'm really pleased with the way, well, we still have the only ethics commission in the state of Idaho, uh, and it, it was so important to, to establish that right and well, and I mean, we had employees, that's the part I don't think that, uh, that scandal, uh, you know, reported about. We had employees that wouldn't, they'd cover up their, they worked for the parks department and they had the Boise City logo on it, they would covered up in public because they were embarrassed and they didn't do anything and you know that's how far it went though so it was a pretty big lift to do that but the ethics commission and the I mean we had a hotline if you had uh, uh, an ethics uh, complaint uh, you could call that and, and you didn't have to uh, come forward in the early going but those those first steps I think were really important and in, uh, in uh, 
and helped and, and I think restored uh, you know people's confidence early I you know just in the first couple of months uh, we started doing Saturday office hours where people could come in on a Saturday and uh, and uh, spend you know everybody got 10 minutes and uh, even if they were, even if they didn't use it people were really excited that that you could come in and talk about whatever you wanted. The door was open. You were going to be accessible and, uh, and transparent, and uh, I think that was really important uh, to establish that as well. So the, um, that's one of the things I'm most pleased about. We've never had a scandal. We've never had a lapse. Uh, the system was built to catch them and to, and to uh, uh, make sure you know it didn't go further, uh, and I'm really, really pleased with that, I think. That uh, you know, in that many years, we've established the culture of doing the right thing and making sure you, uh, you know, if there's a problem, you report it early and you get after it, and yeah. and that's been that's been great. Uh, you know, I think the the other the other piece I would have to say, and they they kind of go together, but the uh, if you you if you can get the police culture and the and the relationship between the community and the police department right uh you can get on to other things you know you can do all the you know all the In other stuff trust uh, public yeah, trust uh, uh that was pretty broken too and uh you know look around the country and, and there's just too many instances where that relationship does not work well and uh beginning with Mike Masterson and continuing with Bill Bones, they built a culture in the police department of uh, de-escalating situations. And I always look to calm things down and, uh, you know, establish relationships in the community, you know, get out of your car and, and know your, uh, your community. And, the, uh, you know, I told the, the police oversight at the time, uh, I said, my, you know, I want to make you the loneliest person in city government, uh, like the old Maytag repairman. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. That was my goal, and we, you know, with the with the department and with the community, we were able to make it a, a part-time job and, and to do things, you know, look at proactive steps to make that relationship better. And so, I'm, I think that's that is just fundamental because if you if you get that right, then you know you can go on to all the other things but if you don't get that right it's hard to do right. much else uh, because that relationship continues to to be a problem so uh, you know crime went down 45 percent in the time I've been mayor uh, and it wasn't all crime the the yeah all crime, the, all crime. The, the FBI started keeping statistics to be able to compare cities 30 35 years ago uh, and uh, and that's gone, you know, those, those uh, crime, you know, that group of crimes, which is, is pretty broad, mm -hmm. is, uh, is down that much. And that, you know, it gets harder to lower it as it gets lower yeah. to go further. But, I, you know, that's, I think... Especially a, seeing the population go like bet, this. You bet. You know, people think, uh, I think that's what, you know, concerns people and has over this time is uh, if we're going to get bigger, we're going to get meaner and we're going to get those other things that people associate with bigger cities. And mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, you know, because the department, their culture was right and their relationship is good and, you know, community policing and, and neighborhood watches and all the things that contribute to, to lowering that, uh, you know, we've been successful in that. And I think that, uh, you know, that's a tribute to all those all those folks, and in the end, the whole community. But that, uh, you know, that's a great thing, and and something I think uh, we should all be, uh, you know, rightly proud of. Mm -hmm. When history looks back, I was thinking about this yesterday with Dick Erdley. We did a story at the Senior Center named after him. Uh, when history looks back on your 16 years, the law enforcement aside population aside, what do you think, how will they measure the job that Dave Beter did? Well, I think that uh, what we worked really hard to do was to build uh, city services and to build, uh, you know, our approach to, to governing the city was, was at the neighborhood level. How much can we do 
uh, where you are. Uh, and that, that really came in, you know, at the very first. And we had a, I had a, I was blessed with council members that agreed with that. You know, park, obviously a school, a rec center if we can, especially in areas where, you know, after school time is, is a concern to parents. Uh, uh, library, you know, and uh, ideally a mix of uses there so that you can go about your day and if you have to drive at shorter distances and if you, uh, but you can uh, access these amenities and these enhancements close to you. Uh, and I think that's, you know, we, we really only had the Fort Boise Community Center. We've got uh, 10 now. We, we did uh, Whittier Elementary School just uh, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, now with uh, North Ada uh, School District in addition to the Boise School District. That's, you know, I, there's a, that's a, uh, it's just a, it's been a great program. Parks we uh, staff it. In some cases, the city build it, but oftentimes the, the school either built space for us or, or dedicates space to us, and that relationship and that uh, cooperation has just been so productive. So, but that I think is, is what uh, we, you know, what we recognized pretty early and, and went about doing that strategically, and, uh, and I think that's been successful. I, I, uh, and I think that's kind of become the norm that mm -hmm. that can that can, can, can continue as we grow. You know, look at uh, you know uh, Harris Ranch was was dead when I came in. Right. Bridge was you know forget it, and you know we were able to get all that going. And then you have a branch library just across the mm -hmm. river. You've got the, the uh, you know you've got all the uh, commercial and and now some commercial coming into into Harris Ranch, you had parks from, really from day one, thanks to a lot of, uh, a lot of work and the, uh, and the uh, generosity of, of Larry Williams and, and his family and the, and, uh, the uh, Harris family. So all that was able to come together early. Uh, in many ways, Harris Ranch is, is sort of our model of new development, but that's the approach, you know, get as many you know, get a mix of uses, get the ability to access those close to you, have, you know, a library as close as you can get, have parks right where they are, you know, schools coming, coming soon. Uh, so I think that's, uh, uh, you know, that's the model. And I think, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, whether that's recognized, you know, for me or our time, I, but I think it's become the norm. I think it's, it's become, uh, you know, where everybody's head, where, where we'll continue to go in the city. Right. You know, there's no denying what, uh, what the skyline has, how the skyline has changed in the 16 years since uh, you've been in office. Um, the population, all of those things, um, and I think 90% uh, of the people that are polled will say those are all positive things. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it has been uh, smart growth and uh, things have really been thought out. The transportation hub right. was genius, putting it underground when we couldn't figure out where to put it on the surface, <coughs> and that bounced around for a decade. <coughs> so there, there's no denying the positive thing, things, but you always have to look back and say, is there something that you regret not being able to finish in your 16 years? Sure, uh, you know, the, the, the one is the most obvious is the library. If we could have gotten the library in the ground and begun within the last year, uh, you know, we can't uh, say for sure, but, I, you know, I would have considered, uh, you know, I would have considered not running this time, which would have been, in retrospect, a good move now, but the, uh, that was the one, you know, we had built up to it, we'd, we'd done all this legwork. I, I'd run at it, on it as a uh, as what I wanted to do. I mentioned it in the state of the city. We had uh, uh, 20 or 30 outreaches uh, to the community on how we'd want to go with it. So that's that's really the only one. Right. Uh, and I, I, you know, I'm still hopeful that uh, you know in the in the relatively near future that happens. But really, that's it. The rest is you know uh, what what. Uh, our community, and this is Valley Wide, 
lacks fundamentally is uh, is a funding source for public transportation. And until the legislature or you know some you know effort uh, happens, you just you cannot build a, you know public transportation without that funding. And it you know there isn't a there isn't a a, a robust public transportation system anywhere in the country in that. I've studied at least a dozen of them, and probably more than that. Mm -hmm. That that operates solely on on a property tax, on a general fund uh, uh, funding source. Just does, it, it, it yeah. can't happen. It doesn't happen. Right. It, it has never happened. Yeah. So that uh, I mean, that's what we need most right now. But uh, I you know I don't have any regrets about that because you know we tried every. You know, every year, yeah. you know, we did all these different things. And along those that. lines, what, what was your level of frustration uh, going to the legislature over the 16 years <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10? <laughs> 10, <laughs> 10 being, you want a number on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, because uh, you, uh, you butted heads with a number of lawmakers over uh, a number of things. Well, uh, let's just say I'm not going to miss that part of the job. Uh, I was in the legislature for five years before that. I, I have a lot of respect for people that serve. I really do, mm -hmm. and I have, I have good relationships with a number of them. And it, uh, the, uh, but it, it, the, the trouble is, you're playing defense all the time. You know, I, I w used to go to talk to various groups of legislators, uh, and you know, I would just say, you know, the Hippocratic oath: just do no harm. Uh, that's not a high bar, you wouldn't think. For a legislative session, but that's not been the case. We're playing defense all the time. It would be, what would it be like if the legislature would say, you know, what tools would help cities yeah. all across the the state do better? Because you know, as much as we talk about the rural nature of Idaho, we, you know, something like 75, 80 percent of people in Idaho live in cities. You know, uh, they may be dependent on a, on a rural economy, and that's what. That's what uh, you know. That's the reason for it. But it, 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 we're a much more urban state than people realize, and those, you know, those tools are important to be able to do what uh, what we need to do. So I, that that's the part. If if you know you're you're constantly playing defense, and that mm -hmm. that's you know taxing and wearing, and you know we were good at it. We did it well, uh, but it it uh, you know what would it be like to to be the other way. How do we enhance communities around the state, and what are the tools? And you know, we're, we we know that they'd be limited. But for instance, the the ability to to go to our citizens and say, will you support a little bit of sales tax, whatever that number is, for this use, and they can decide for themselves. And uh, that's not a you know, that's not a crazy notion to have that ability. In fact, we have it in resort cities. Have it. Uh, they can do that. Uh, so it's already around, uh, just those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, uh, I, it was it was tradition for the mayor of Boise to come uh, welcome the legislature back, and I got to do that uh, first year. Uh, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I gave Dirk Kempthorne a great big, huge veto stamp, uh, and if you look in. Uh, as the governor veto stuff, that's the one they use. Oh, is that right? It's as big as his page almost. Uh, <laughs> As a joke, it was a real stamp, but yeah. they they it became part of what they used, and uh, you know I, I I had some fun and get, you know gave a little bit more speech than they were used to, and mm -hmm. uh, was never invited back after that, Mark. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of fun to do, <laughs> and that that tradition didn't continue right. that, uh, longer than that. Well, uh, along those lines, you have had some huge high moments over the last 16 years, um, you know, in uh, one of the fastest growing regions and cities in the West, uh, you know, you, the, your moniker of the most livable city yeah. really stuck. Um, you got to welcome President Obama, you got to fly in Air Force One, you were here for the uh, Special Olympic yeah. World Winter Games, yeah. you got to preside over some really, really big things over the last 16 years, but knowing you uh, and watching you in 2007 on January 20th on the steps of the state capitol welcoming 
the 2007 <laughs> Fiesta Bowl champions. You know, I was going to mention that if you didn't. Like, I, but you, you know. I found the video, <laughs> and uh, uh, I remember the chant of Gora, Gora, uh, being uh, something that they heard across our borders. Uh, that still has to be in the top three things yeah absolutely I, I i put it exactly there in fact i like i said i didn't know if you if you remember that but i was going to mention it because uh i mean that whole that whole run there i mean the fiesta ball was magic that i don't know that you know we'll ever see again maybe you know it, it'd be hard imagine what would top that yeah but uh you know i had the good fortune of going to the game on the off chance they were they would win it and then uh you know, to have the game we saw, uh, and then the, you know we were able to, you know, we're real stingy with the key to the city, but we were able to get one ready for, for when they came back and give it to Coach Peterson and the team, and then uh, and then uh, uh, you know to have the chance to, to you know to welcome them right from the state house steps, and I, you know, uh, you're not going to hear that cheer in any other city or very few other cities. We had cheerleaders with the Gorda sign ready to go and uh, no, that was a kick. That was such a kick. Uh, in fact, this is a little a little thing, but it, it ended up, you know, as you've said, I mean, we, we set out to be the most livable city in the country and we arrived at that. Thankfully, people don't remember the other things that we tried that didn't, didn't work very well. I'm not going to tell you those, but uh, uh, Gene Blameyer said that on the steps in, in introducing me, and it was really the first time it came back to us, or one of the first times it came back to us after you've repeat. You know, it takes right. repetition before people, you yeah. know, uh, you know, really get their heads around. You start to hear it, but that was that was the one. So that was huge. It was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it meant it, you know what it meant to the whole community and to the, you know. Uh, you know, I don't. Tra I didn't travel too much in this job. I thought it was important to be around, but I, you know, uh, go to D.C. at least once a year. And when you know, especially with the increased security, you know, you're you're getting you got to go through security at almost every building. Yeah. And when those security folks started talking Boise State and knowing players, they didn't just know you know blue right. turf. You know, they they could name they were naming coaches and players and. You know, you, see, you hear that around, but I remember that pretty distinctly, you know, after the Fiesta Bowl, they'd yeah. say, you know, they'd start naming Kellen Moore, or they'd start naming players, yeah, and Johnson. that, you just didn't, you, you didn't hear that kind of thing. In fact, the Canadian ambassador <laughs> gave a speech here and talked about watching the Fiesta Bowl. I mean, it, it, oh, it, it, had, a, it had a wide, wide funny. berth, so... Well, as we wrap things up, what uh, what would you like your last official message to be <laughs> to the folks, the, the 300,000 strong folks in the city limits? Uh, what do you what do you think your uh, your send off? Oh, that's be. That's the easiest one, Mark. Thank you for asking the easiest question last. Uh, it's just gratitude to every single one of them uh, for allowing me to do the job I, uh, well, I wanted to play fullback for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, in fact, I saw Corey Hall. I see him fairly regularly. You lived my life, Corey Hall. You played fullback for the Green Bay Packers. But besides that, from a pretty young age, I always thought it would be uh, uh, an awful lot of fun to be the mayor of my hometown and to get to do that. Uh, and I uh, I have such gratitude for being able to do that at all. But to do that for 16 years is, uh, you know, to wake up every day and your job is to try to make the city better. And they, you know, they pay you, uh, you know, on regular intervals. Uh, you can't, you know, who gets to do that in their lives? Uh, and I got to do it for, you know, quite a run. And uh, that's what I want people to uh, to take away and understand and, and just how, uh, just how grateful I am 
uh, and to my family uh, for allowing me to. It's been a, you know, it's tough to be in in public office, and it's, I think it's tougher to even be the family of a public servant. Uh, my wife and my daughter are, uh, you know, went through a lot, uh, an extended family even, uh, you know, and, and had a staff that, uh, you know, was second to none. We had uh, good fortune of keeping staff for years. In one case, you know, two of my staff members, my chief of staff and, uh, and uh, you know, my assistant, I've been here since the first day. Yeah. And that's pretty rare to have. So, uh, but you know, I, uh, you know, I had hoped when you run, you, I, I was almost certain I wanted to run for a second term. And I think most, unless they really dislike it, you know, if you if you're fortunate enough to win, and all it takes to do that, you want to come back. But I didn't know. Then I just said, I'll, you know, I'll take it from there. So, uh, but to have you know, to have four terms. I have a lot, you know, over the years, a lot of uh, pals that are mayors, uh, and they aren't around. Uh, any of them, Seattle, Portland, Salt Lake, Madison, Wisconsin, Pocatello, mm -hmm. go down the list. Um, uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's the easiest question you you asked me, Mark, and I hope uh, I hope people know that. Well, Mayor, there is a. Uh celebratory drink in the Basque culture <laughs> that uh, that they use whenever it's time to celebrate a moment. Uh, this is called a Kalimocho, uh, which uh, I, I'm not a member of the Basque culture, but I'm pretty sure it's just red wine and cola, correct? Isn't it it just, is. It's with wine. apologies to other people, but it's uh, it, it's not really my favorite, Mark. I hate to burst your bubble there, but uh. no, but it's it's pretty much tradition though in the culture, right? <laughs> oh, and my. is is it fifty fifty? Pretty close, pretty close. To the wine. Okay. Okay. Uh. There you are. Uh, and uh, I would say. Gota, but that's probably not appropriate. What, what would you say to, to toast? Uh, Osasuna is health. Osasuna, Mark. To health. Yeah. And 16 pretty amazing years <laughs> as the mayor of Boise. Cheers to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not good. That's not good, Mark. No. Uh, that is... Uh, that is terrible. <laughs> that is the worst thing that any. <laughs> I, guess. I want to know the guy that said, hmm, if we take some red wine and put cola in there, that would be good. Yeah, I don't think you're going to find that person, but there we go.